Here, read this. Woof. As you may know, if you have watched my video on the island of Dr. Moreau and The Wonderful Visit, I have been reading my way through H.G. Wells' novels in chronological order, rereading some that I haven't read in a long time and reading a lot for the first time, uh, including the, video, the uh, book I would like to talk to you about today, which is absolutely delightful. It's called The Wheels of Chance. It's one of the oddest and most entertaining books I've read in a long time. Um, where to start, really? It is subtitled A Bicycling Idyll. I've never really known how to say bicycle. Do you say bicycling or bicycling? I'm actually going to look it up. This is terrible. I've got no excuse for doing this. It's not live. For some reason, saying bicycling has always sounded wrong. And, and I'm about to discover that it probably is. Bicycling. Bicycling. Oh, no, it is. Okay, bicycling. Sorry. A bicycling idyll. This is the story of a draper called Hoopdriver, who at the peak, we are told in the introduction in my Delphi Classics edition, at the peak of the golden age of bicycling, um, buys himself one of these machines. I should say, I've been reading these, as I, as I mentioned in the previous two uh, videos, in this Delphi Classics edition. I highly recommend Delphi Classics. Even though it feels wrong and it feels like maybe they'll get shut down by the by the fiction police when we, we all we all find out you can't sell the collected works of H.G. Wells for less than a pound. So get them while it's before the prohibition um, starts. In that introduction, they mentioned that bicycles were seen as um, quite a challenge to the rigid class structure of the times. And they led to uh, a big shake-up, particularly with the middle classes, and also to female emancipation. The whole novel brings it home that before the, uh, the rise of automobiles, democratising mobility in the way that bicycles do um, was, was really quite a shock to the culture. Now, in that introduction, they say that, uh, they, they well, they give the impression that H.G. Wells is going to be very patronising towards his protagonist, um, who is a draper. And I think the introduction says something like, the idea of a draper on a bike would be similar to a chimpanzee in a top hat. And so, to be honest, my heart sank at that because I thought it was going to be a very stuffy, classy piece. And I don't mean classy like a silk bathrobe. Classy in a sort of twee, parochial, state of England type novel. It's not like that at all, is the good news. It starts off a little bit like that. There's a bit of, um, you know, gentle mockery of draping and the, the business of draping. But then as soon as we get on the road and um, a hoop driver takes hold of his machine, and it really is a machine, you get a sense of them being really big, clunky things. that, that They have a, you know, the, the light on a bike, you have to light with a match. We're talking that that kind of machine. Some of the most enjoyable bits are just descriptions of cycling. Some of which, to anyone who's ever ridden a bike, will will hit home for the short, the sheer bliss uh, that you can sometimes achieve riding a bike. There's a wonderful description early on of of saying a hoop driver is always falling off. There's some really really good stuff on on the many ways and techniques of falling off bikes. But there's a wonderful bit where he says a hoop driver doesn't ride well. He didn't ride fast. But he rode generously, opulently taking up the whole road and nibbling at the footpath here and there as well. My favourite bit is when he he falls off and he has the piss taken out of him for a little bit by 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 someone on the road, and uh, thinks about throwing some sharp remarks, but can't turn around once he's got the bike going again because he might risk falling off a second time. Instead of that, he tries to infuse as much disdain as possible into the back of his head. Which again, I think anyone riding a bike who's who's ever been sort of... Happens to me in Edinburgh all the time. I ride a bike and I go past someone giving them plenty of space and they shout about at me at have, uh, having a bell or giving them some warning when it's a cycle path and they shouldn't be on there. I've often tried to infuse the back of my head with as much vulgarity and scorn as I possibly can. And it, it's difficult, but th there is a knack to it. But this is more than just a, a, a cycling comedy. It is um, a really odd study of fantasists. Hoop Driver is a fantasist. He goes around with vague dreams of rescuing damsels and, and saving the day and getting into scrapes. Um, they never really cohere um, until he bumps into uh, a, a fellow cyclist, a lady in grey, 
um, and they he ends up ensnared in her her own journey, and they keep they keep crossing paths. And before he knows it, he is he is sort of engaged on a completely made up series of fantasies about um, rescuing this girl. And it's as if the the freedom that comes with having a bike has boosted this secret side of himself. There are some deadpan lines. I mean, H.G. Wells doesn't get much credit for being funny, and often he isn't. <laughs> but um, there are some really, really funny bits in this. One of my uh, favorite lines was, well, when Hoopdriver is wrestling between his, uh, his sort of heroic inner self, the part of him that would like to be a knight errant, Wells writes, the situation was primordial. The man beneath prevailed for a moment over the civilized superstructure, the draper. And because it's a bit knight errantry, it's, it is episodic. There are, there is sort of a series of scrapes and adventures. But there's also like a series of riffs, some of some of which don't go anywhere, but are really sort of just flash by in a very entertaining way. There's a bit where the bike he got secondhand, um, and really the only advice he gets about riding it, someone offers him early on, is don't run over dogs. There's a there's a great little riff on on the history of the bike because he got it secondhand. He doesn't know what sort of figure owned it before. And it could have been someone really quite indecorous, um, a poet or a, a mountebank. And when he's wondering about its, its past, um, Wells says, its seller had been silent about its moral character. But when it sees, it sees the lady in grey, it convulses violently. So it's sort of, uh, it is given a bit of a, a, bit of a character for, for this brief moment, almost like a, like a mount in a knight errantry story. I mentioned in um, my Island of Dr. Moreau video that Wells seems very interested in, in making literary comments. There, there are references to whoever the narrator is. There are references to my inexperience as a writer, or uh, at one point he says, I wish I could rewrite that bit. But there's also contemporary literary references as well. There's a reference to Sherlock Holmes being now happily dead. And he keeps um, sort of criticizing the strictures of realism. And uh, I think guessing in particular, comes in for a knock about that. There's a wonderful line about uh, nothing could be further than the author's ambition than a wanton realism. But Mr. Hoopdriver's nose is a plain and salient fact. Plain and salient facts like having to sneeze or getting flies in your face are what keep sort of undermining the, uh, keeping the wheels uh, turning, as it were. There's a um, lovely little description of the problem of um, taking hands off the handlebar. Simple in itself, but complex in its consequences. It's just such an unusual and, and, and rich book. It's almost like Wells, instead of going, if you like, high concept, he went so small that he had the freedom to just bring in on all, on all, all sorts of his, of his sort of like pet topics, if you like. And, and by the way, bicycles is, is, is one of them. He was fascinated by bicycles. In fact, I think the, uh, the design of the time machine is quite based on the bicycle. If you remember, it's, it's rods. It's got kind of, whoops, it's got like a handlebar, like a bike. But I think what I like most about it is the, uh, is Hoopdriver. He's actually, far from being, you know, a little throwaway comic character, he's, he's one of, I think he's one of Wells's best heroes. You know, figures like the, the, the Traveller and um, Prendick, they have, in, in Dr. Moreau, they have a lot of mystery about them. And maybe Prendick's got a bit more, bit more depth, but they're essentially men of action. They're quite predictable. We see how they 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 change and are challenged, but they are they're sort of watchers at the end of the day. You know, they they are intelligent observers of of the world, which is much more interesting than they are. Here, the world is just the South Coast. Um, Hoop driver is making a bicycle tour of the south coast, and while yeah he's a draper and he's and and we're sort of told how small minded he is at the start. His inner life is this this hodgepodge of of fantasies or um, congestion of acquired ideas, which have to find some kind of form when they when they meet with this this lady in grey and and he is sort of untethered from his from his boring little life as a draper. Um, you know, instead of set dressing. That life, if you like, he is suddenly in amongst it with this new power, his, his power of mobility. The the, the bits that are about um, self deception and fantasies are are its best moments, I think. Little lines crop up like self deception is the anaesthetic of life, while God is carving out our beings. It's just so funny how our little sort of like grand um, epigrams are dropped 
in as the very uh, safe and cozy English countryside is treedling by. Or, you know, you'll suddenly get to a chapter title that's called Of the Artificial in Man and of the Zeitgeist. There is quite a lot of Wellsian science fiction and fantasy tropes just on the periphery of this comfy little English holiday. <laughs> just on the f- just one last thing on the on the uh, fantasist element. My favorite bit was Hoop Driver, he ends up with the girl, he rescues her from her a sort of oppressive man that she's with who um superficially at first anyway hoop driver resembles they they're both dressed in brown i think the the thing that distinguishes them in in my memory is that at the start of the novel hoop driver is pull, pulling on an insufficient mustache whereas uh his enemy i think he's called bechamel um has an abundant mustache but uh that's another just like interesting little idea that just f- crops up and then is 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 dropped is the, is the idea of these two being kind of doppelgangers and they're both on bikes which are is unusual in this landscape uh, but anyway no the, it, once he gets the girl he sort of runs away with himself in making up a story because he doesn't want to admit to being a draper and um in a sort of splurge of overzealous bullshitting spontaneously makes up a story about defeating a lion in South Africa I think defeating a lion for, for sure um, I can't quite remember where it is. I think it was South Africa. You know, he's he's really sort of cross with himself and in, in getting into this mire of lies that he has he has been building up um, with this with this girl. And he walks away sadly, having added a lion to the burden of his conscience. I don't know what else to say other than it's a really delightful book. I, I was so I just really really enjoyed it and and thought it was genuinely funny. And um, and like I say, I really think Hoop Driver is a is a is a is a great character. Not because we feel patronizingly sorry for him. He's not one of those characters where you're being gulled into liking him because he's just a little old draper. No, because he's actually he's not really a a deceiver. He's he's a self deceiver. His self deception runs away with him when he is given a unusual and sudden freedom. Anyway, I'm not going to make a you know, a little review of every H.G. Wells book I read, because uh, I have read a couple that aren't aren't as good. Um, but I did, I really wanted to highlight that one because I really enjoyed it. I'd I put it, this one and The Wonderful Visit have been the big surprises so far. Um, what I will do is if I do get to the end of the 50 novels by H.G. Wells, I will make a, a sort of summary, maybe rank them, do something very YouTube-y at the end. Um, just so I can quickly talk about all of them, because e- even the bad ones, there's stuff to talk about. Uh, but that's about it, I think. Definitely read the the Wheels of Chance, um, and I bet you can't get it cheaper than by buying the Delphi classics of all of H.G. Wells's work. <laughs> Although actually, I'm sure you'll be able to find a free copy on Gutenberg or something. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. I think happy reading, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.